We started with eight, and now there are only two remaining for the A-Sun Championship. Number two seed Liberty and the top seed Lipscomb Bisons from Nashville. With Ryan Maddox, I'm Alan York, and we welcome you inside Allen Arena. Back-to-back years for Liberty. The excitement is palpable in this arena. For Lipscomb, the top seed, 25-6. and six. The Bisons, 14-2 and two like Liberty was in the regular season. They've got a star-studded cast led by the Conference Player of the Year, Garrison Matthews, 6'5", senior from Franklin, Tennessee, game high and team high, 20 points per game. He's got a season high, 32 on the season. Another all-conference performer, Rob Marbury on the inside, 6'7", senior, Nashville, Tennessee, 15 points, four rebounds a game. Michael Buckland is a 6'4", junior out of High Point, North Carolina more affectionately known as the furniture capital of the world. Six points, three rebounds a game for Buckland. Also in the starting five, Kenny Cooper, six-foot junior. He's the point guard, Nashville, Tennessee. Had a triple-double in the quarterfinal win over Kennesaw State back on Monday. And Eli Pepper, he's the emotional spark plug for this team. 6'8", senior, Princeton, Kentucky, eight points, eight rebounds a game. Our lineup's brought to you by Lynchburg Roofing. For Liberty, they'll go with their normal five. Caleb Holmesley, 6'6", redshirt junior, Indian Trail, North Carolina, averaging 11 points in the tournament. Lavelle Cabell, the aforementioned point guard, 6'3", senior, Arlington, Texas. He is 7 of 8 from the field in the tournament, been in double figures, 11 of his last 13. Elijah Cuffey, 6'4", sophomore, Polka, West Virginia, fourth in the league coming in in three-point shooting with 53 on the season. The point guard, Georgie Pacheco Ortiz, a 6'1 junior, Ponce, Puerto Rico, seven points and two rebounds per game on the year. He is 6 of 12 from the field in the tournament. And Scotty James playing the best basketball he has in a Liberty uniform. Double figures his last 10, including five double doubles. 6'7 junior out of Tarpon Springs, Florida. Team high, 13 points, nine rebounds a game. The head coach, Richie McKay, sixth season on the mountain, 122 wins as the head coach of Liberty. The officials in this ball game: Bart Lennox, Steve Anderson, Rob Rourke. Liberty and Lipscomb for the A Sun title. The tip is controlled by the Bisons, and they will move to our right. As you listen here in the first half, Lipscomb leads the league in scoring. Flames the best defensive team in the league. Something will have to give. Matthews in the paint, tied up with Cabell. And we're going to get a foul early on on the Flames senior leader, Lavelle Cabell. So that's how this game starts 16 seconds in with a level Lavelle Cabell foul. First on Liberty, Garrison Matthews. Our first look at him, Ryan, going to the line. He's the best player in the league. Won the player of the year honors, and the first free throw on the way is no good. So that's a good start for Liberty on the other side of it, despite the Cowboy foul. Definitely. I mean, this is a young man who has stepped up in the biggest of all games. Last year's A-Sun final, he came out, hit the first seven shots in the first half, scored 33. Got to contain him. Matthews off to a good start. He goes 1-2 at the line. 1-0. Lipscomb. Here's Liberty moving to our left. These two teams split the regular season matchup, each winning on the road. Liberty controlled the pace and the game in their second matchup here on February 13th. Here's Cabell. Slipped on the deck. Keeps his dribble. Takes it to the paint, to the rim. Layup no good. James rebound inside. Pepper ties him up. James throws an elbow. And a jump ball is called. I said an elbow, probably was not, but Pepper kind of flailing back. It's a tie-up, possession, arrow to Liberty. Tensions very high in this game, Ryan. Really are, and Liberty, as we talked about anyway, has to keep their composure. This is an exchange where they played well in the second matchup this year. Baseline out of bounds. Lipscomb likes to have a defender right underneath the goal. They do not switch screens. Alternating possession will go to Liberty. 1-0 Lipscomb. 50 seconds in. Holmesley had to put it up at the horn. Shot clock violation. He made the three, but it was after the buzzer. It's got to feel good for Caleb to get even just seeing that ball go through the hoop. You know, raucous crowd like you talk about. You know, get a defensive stop here. Get it going on offense. 
Lipscomb to lead, 1-0 with the ball after the shot clock violation. One minute gone here from Nashville. Marbury, left wing to Cooper. Pepper screens. Feed goes to Matthews up top, guarded by Cabell. Right wing to Buckland. First time he's touched it. He'll drive to the foul circle, no shot. Right side to Pepper. Gives up to Buckland for three over Georgie, no good. And the rebound taken by Liberty Scotty James. The second rebound for the junior from Tarpon Springs, Florida. 1-0 Lipscomb. 90 seconds elapsed here first half. Liberty the ball to our left. Elijah Cuffey left baseline to Holmesley. Up top to James, top of the key. Back to Caleb left wing. Caleb down low to James, goes up off the window and scores around Cooper left block, and Liberty leads 2-1. Beautiful spacing that time for the Flames. Two-man game on one side of the floor. Easy bucket. And we had a whistle and another foul. It's going to be on Holmesley. Give me an idea, Ryan, how tight do officials call games like this? It seems like it's pretty tight right now. It really does, and I think, you know, they're human, just like anybody else, A.Y., Liberty trying to get over top of those ball screens and the dribble handoffs. They're going to be influenced by this raucous crowd just like the teams will. Lavelle Cabell goes to the bench. First sub in is Darius McGee. He's got the Cooper assignment. Pass up top to Buckland. Left wing now to Matthews. He'll shoot over Cuffey for three. Bricked out to the right. Georgie watches it fall out of bounds by the Lipscomb students, which surround us. I mean, we are suffocated to our left and right. There's a nice pocket of over 200 Liberty fans cross court to our right. But beyond that, it's all purple and gold in this arena in Nashville. Flames up 2-1, to 17.50 to play in the half. Flames run the set offense. James has it, top of the key. Guarded by Marbury. One dribble there for Scotty. Right wing to Pacheco. Georgie looks in on the arc. Feeds Gums, cutting to the hoop. Layup bricked it. Great cut by Keenan Gums, but he missed the layup. Two points he'd like to have back. Flames defending now. Lipscomb has the ball to our right, down 2-1. to one. Matthews up top, shoots over Cuffey. Now will dumps it into Pepper. Layup good. I don't think they were expecting to feed inside to Pepper, but he puts an off-balance shot up and gives Lipscomb the lead back 3-2. Three, Three minutes gone, first half. Flames the ball down by one. Feed to James. On the block, count it, and one. Foul inside on Lipscomb. Miscommunication by the Bisons on the inside. Foul will go to Michael Buckland as first, and the first for Lipscomb. Nice recognition that time by Gums. Lipscomb choosing to front the post that time. Help side did not rotate in time. Scotty Pogo sticks it straight up. Never brought the ball down. Chance for an and one here. Scotty with four points. Free throw up. Got it. James has five. Liberty takes the lead. By two now, 5-3, to 17-08 to play first half. Pepper, the drive, dumps it in for Marbury, shoots over James on the block and scores. Rob Marbury, the all-conference center from Nashville, ties the game at five. McGee for Liberty, right sideline pass to Cuff. Elijah picks up his dribble, tosses up top to James. Scotty against Marbury at the foul circle. Looking right, hands off to Georgie. Pacheco to the foul line. Looks right, nothing there. Left to Cuffey, back up to Georgie. Pacheco with six. Defended well by Buckland, now with four. Pacheco lobs into James, got around Marbury and scores with one on the shot clock. What James a, has an early seven. What a beautiful post entry that time by the season point guard. Early lead for the Flames. 16-22 to play, first half. A Sun title. Cooper, right wing three, bricked it. James, great box out of Marbury for Liberty and the rebound. 7-5 Liberty, four minutes, just about exhausted here, first half. Pacheco dribbling against the defensive champ by the Lipscomb students. Takes it front court to Gums, back to Georgie left wing. James posting, feed goes, left block. Against Barberry again, 10 to shoot, passes up top Gums, right wing McGee for three. Bricked out, no good, inside rebound Lipscomb's Kenny Cooper. Lipscomb will push now. Liberty leading 5-3, 15-45 to play in the half. Part of me, 7-5 Liberty by two. Left wing Pepper has a height mismatch on Gums. Tosses back out to Buckland. Buckland with 13 to shoot against Pacheco. Foul line step back Jay. Missed it long. Rebound McGee for Liberty. And again, you'll see Liberty, Ryan, slow the pace when they get defensive rebounds. Absolutely. They're going to take what they want in the half court, deliberate as usual, trying to get the ball down to Scotty. 
Flames up by two, 15-15 to play first half. Here in Nashville, the A-Sun Championship on the line. Cuffey pushing over Matthews, charging call, Elijah Cuffey. Matthews anticipating the break on the floor by Cuff. That is the third foul on Liberty in the first five minutes. Only one whistled on Lipscomb as we go to media timeout. 15.08 to play. In Nashville, first half, Liberty 7, Lipscomb 5. This is the A-Sun Championship on the Liberty Flames Sports Network from Van Wack. James off to a great start, seven points, leading all scores. He is 3 of 3 from the field, and he's getting a break right now on the bench. Mayo Baxter-Bell has checked in. Mayo 6 of 9 from the field in the tournament, averaging seven points. So he's a very good compliment to Scotty James on the inside. And the guy all the media in the house wanted to know about. Tell us about number zero. <laughs> and we said he brings energy. He's improved a lot in his four years on campus and still has another year left. Speaking of really good and improved, the freshman of the year, Asan Asajala, is in the game now on the inside for Lipscomb. Injured last year, but... Rave reviews this season. Matthews, deep right wing three. Good over Gums. Tickled the twine that time, and Lipscomb back in front, 8-7. Got to give that guy zero space. It doesn't matter. Nailed it. Liberty down one. Lavelle Cabell has checked back in for the Flames. Gums with the feed up top. Back to Cabell. Guarded by Cooper. Baxter Bell to screen. Cabell right wing to Holmesley. Inside, nothing there. Caleb outside to McGee. Bumbled the feed, but gives it back to Holmesley. Right wing three, missed it. Rebound by Lipscomb. Bison's lead by one. Matthews up top to Cooper. Right wing now to Matt Rose. Inside to Asajula against Baxter Bell to Matthews. Right corner back into Asajula on the repost against Mayo. Shoots off the window and scores high off the window. Biggest lead for Lipscomb, 10-7, and they're on a 5-0 run. Height advantage coming into play that time for Asajula. Good post defense for Mayo, just not quite tall enough to contest the shot. Holmesley gives it up to Baxter Bell up top. Flames down three. Baxter Bell gets around Asajula to the rim and floats in there. Wow. Nice basket for Mayo off the glass, and it's 10-9, Lipscomb. Cooper gets around McGee to the rim. Baxter Bell deflects it away. Asajula missed inside. Follow tip a third time. And Asajula keeps it alive. He's got four. And it's 12-9 Lipscomb. A lot of hands right there to tap that up off the window. Lipscomb by three. Baxter Bell dribbling right of the paint. Drives Asajula into the paint. Asajula blocks it. Ball goes to Holmesley. Left wing Cabell for three. In and out, no good. Gums kept it alive, and we got what? A foul on Keenan Gums. His first and the fourth on Liberty, and you can just sense the energy in the building. Again, both teams' teams finished dead 14-2 and two atop the Big South, but due to tiebreakers, Lipscomb won. Huge advantage just from an energy perspective for Lipscomb right now. Definitely, especially when that the home team makes those energy plays like you talk about, partner. Playing volleyball on that offensive glass, have to keep Asajula down. That is the fourth foul on Liberty. Lipscomb leading by three, 12.53 to play in the half. Nathan Moran, senior from Franklin, Tennessee, has checked in. Matthews has it right wing, guarded by Pacheco. Skip pass up to Rose. Now to Matthews against Pacheco again. He'll dribble it to the right block. Shoots window. Missed it. Ball tapped up. Taking Liberty. Really good defense by Georgie that time. Flames come right to left. Down by three. 12-32 to play in the half. Georgie up top for three. Missed it short. High off the glass and off. Rebound Lipscomb. Kenny Cooper. Right wing Moran. Dribbles to the top against Cabell. Left wing to Asajula. Looking for a handoff. He'll drive Scotty to the paint. Scotty blocks his shot. Asajal recovers up top. Moran for three. It's a brick. Scotty James a rebound for Liberty. Flames getting some bounces now when Lipscomb doesn't hit him from the top. Huge stop that time with the new media coming up at the next whistle. 12 minutes to play. First half. Lipscomb 12. Liberty 9. James on the feed. Left block against Asajal. 10 feet out. He'll dribble left block. Goes around him. And a foul on Asajal will take us to a media timeout. 
That's the first on Asan Asanjula, the second on Lipscomb. As we break away here in Nashville, 11.48 to play first half. Lipscomb 12, Liberty 9. This is the A-Sun Championship on the Liberty Flames Sports Network from Van Wagner. All right, thanks a lot, Steve. Out of town scores brought to you by Southern Air. 12-9, Lipscomb leading here, 11.48 to play. Big shout-out to Liberty Volleyball coach Trevor Johnson tuning in today. Trevor was out and about recruiting this weekend. Coach, thanks for tuning in. And let us know where you're tuning in. You can email us, lfsn at liberty.edu. You can also tweet at us at LU Flames Voice. And we put a post out on social media, Ryan, on our Instagram account, at Liberty Flames. And, hey, just curious where fans are watching today or listening. Global. Yeah. Global. That's so exciting. I'll just say that. You take your pick. We've got a fan listening or watching from there. Was it Estonia, one of the Estonia, countries you mentioned? Yep. And uh, Italy. 20 to shoot for Liberty in the blue today. Lipscomb in the white. Cabell inbounds to Holmesley. Back to Cabell. Lavelle at the dotted line. Now to Georgie. High post right jumper. Up good. Georgie Pacheco. His first basket. And makes it 12 to 11. Lipscomb by one. Bison's the ball. Eli Pepper. To Moran up top for three. That's a brick. Rebound taken. Holmesley knocked down by Jake Wolf. He came in like he was rappelling down for the Raptors. And that'll be the first on Jake Wolf and the third for Lipscomb. Wolf doesn't play much. Makes plays like that. He won't be in long. Flames down one, 11-19 to play in the half, 12-11. Flames the ball after the offensive foul by Wolf. Pacheco right wing to Cabell, inside to James against Marbury. Now to Pacheco up top, left wing, Cuffy three. Out to the right, no good. Liberty 0 of 5 from downtown. Lipscomb just 1 of 6. Bison's the ball, leading by one. Marbury. Down low to Pepper, cutting, dunking right by Holmesley. Eli Pepper, we understand, was a little bit wound up in the shoot-around today. Wouldn't know it by that dunk. 14 to 11. Lipscomb by three. Holmesley, left wing to Georgie for three. Short, rebound Lipscomb. Claims 0 is 6 now from downtown. Lipscomb by three. 10-27 to play with the ball first half. To our right, Pepper. To Moran off a pick. Up top, Moran back to Pepper, left corner. Lob into Marbury against James. Shooting off the window, left hand. Marbury, his second basket. And the biggest lead now for Lipscomb, 16-11. to 11. That's patented for Marbury on that left block. He's going to go to his right shoulder every time off the window. Holmes lead, pulls up. At the foul line, missed it. Rebound by Lipscomb. Bison's by five. 9.54 to play, first half. Neither team shooting at 40% yet. Marbury again gets the feed left block around James. Bounces out to Pepper, right corner for three. Bricked out, no good. James the rebound for Liberty. Flames right now out rebounding Lipscomb, 10-5. to five. Lipscomb on the year, a plus five rebounding advantage on the margin. Not so far today. Flames down five, 9.25 to play in the half. Cuffey looks inside, nobody there. Skips it near wing left to Georgie. Pacheco dribbles, foul line, pulls up, jumper, got another one. Georgie's got four, this time from the left elbow. 16-13 Lipscomb, the ball and the lead to our right. Nathan Moran, top of the key, guarded by Holmesley. Up top to Pepper, looks left, back to right to Moran. Moran will dribble up top, now guarded by Cabell. He'll bounce off left wing to Wolf. Dribbles back up top against Cuff. Right wing to Pepper, lob into Marbury. Against James. Hook shot left hand, good. Right from in front, Marbury's got six. And the post, just like it was in the second matchup here, Ryan, really playing well. Yep. Rob Marbury had a bunch of early buckets. I think he had 16 in that first half. The second affair, loves that right block going towards his middle. Eight and a half to play, first half. Lipscomb by five. That's their biggest lead. Liberty led by two early on. Cuffey left wing three. Short, got his own miss. Left block, 
Out to James. Dribbles in the paint. And what do we got? A foul in the paint. On whom? I believe Michael Buckland. Okay. Second on Buckland. The fourth on the Bisons. Subs in for Liberty. Keenan Gums, Darius McGee, Mayo Baxter-Bell. James Cuffey Cabell will sit. 8-17 to play in the half. Liberty down 18-13 with the ball. 27 to shoot on the possession. Ball comes into Baxter Bell, far right corner. Mayo dribbles right of the key against the Sajula. Bounces up to Gums. Now to Holmesley between the circles. Caleb knee high dribble against Matthews. Picked up on a double team with 14 to shoot. Pulls up at the foul line. Jump pass right corner three. Good for Keenan Gums. Right by the Lipscomb bench. Pulls Liberty within two. 18-16. Gorgeous pass for Caleb that time. Drawing some help. Coming down in the air. Here's Cooper against McGee. Top of the key. Now to Andrew Fleming. Junior from Nashville. Up top jumper Matthews no good. Liberty the rebound. Keenan Gums. Outstanding rebounding right now, up 12 to 5 on the advantage for Liberty. Flames down by two on the scoreboard, though. 18 16 with the ball. Seven and a half to play, first half. Gums to the paint. Spins on the dribble, dumps it down for Baxter Bell. He threw it away. Mayo wanted a foul call, didn't get it. Cooper with it now, guarded by Gums. Gets around Gums to the block, shoots up over Georgie, missed it. Got his own miss and a foul on Liberty. It's going to be on Baxter Bell, his first, number five on the Flames. Timeout on the floor, 7-13 to play. First half, Lipscomb 18, Liberty 16. This is Liberty basketball from Van Wagner. But for Liberty to stay focused, you know, seeing that first three go down was so crucial. 0 for At, 9. Yeah, after a 0 for 7 exactly. start, though, yeah. Yep. They were 0 for 9 in the first half in Lynchburg and never really recovered. But the threes that they're getting are open. They're making the extra pass. They're the best three-point shooting team in the A-Sun. They have to stick to their guns, keep letting them fly. There's a foul before our timeout on Mayo Baxter-Bell. Liberty has five team fouls, and it's five separate players. Kenny Cooper is a left-handed shooter, free throw good. Cooper averages 10. That's his first point, 19-16. Lipscomb by three, next free throw. <laughs> Off to the left, no good. Bricked it. Lipscomb now two of four at the foul line. Liberty just one of one. Flames down three, 7.06 to play first half. And the Navy today, Liberty is the two seed. Lipscomb in the home white with the purple and gold trim. Liberty has the white and red trim. Gums, chest pass. Top of the key to Baxter Bell. Mayo hands off to Pacheco. He'll drive the paint, bounce it off of Asajal. I think that was on purpose just because nobody was on the block. He bounced it off Asajal out of bounds, resets the offense. Only six to shoot, though. Yep. Had a similar situation early in the first media segment. Had five coming out of a baseline out of bounds situation. Was unable to get a shot off in time as Caleb actually made one just after the horn. Have to be cognizant of that clock all night long. Scotty James comes back in. Lavelle Cabell will inbound it. Flames have six to shoot. Holmesley off the inbounds. Late baseline jumper. Could not hit it. Rolled out. Holmesley 0-3 from the field. Has yet to score. Here's Matthews driving against Gums. And the quick whistle on Keenan Gums will be his second and the sixth on Liberty. Coach McKay looking up at the scoreboard and discrepancy not quite what it was to begin the game, but still makes you pause and think. Elijah Cuffey comes in for Gums. He's out there with McGee, Holmesley, James, and Cabell. Ball inbound to the Cooper foul line. Spins against McGee, gets it around James. Wow, what a move by Cooper. Hangs in the air left-handed. Gets Scotty up in the air and scored around him. Back to a five-point lead, 21-16 for Lipscomb. Skip pass, right corner, Cuffy three. Rimmed out, no good. Rebound Lipscomb. That was a good look for Elijah. Had Matthews flying at him. Cooper right wing, now to Matthews in the corner. Back to Fleming now. Driving against Cuffy, cannot get to the foul line. Up top to Cooper for three. It's good. Cooper's got six, and the Flames down eight, 24-16. 5.57 to play in the half. 
Cabell left wing to McGee. He'll go around Fleming, pulls up left baseline. Got it. Darius McGee with a big shot, 24-18. Shooting that from the left baseline. Cooper to the rack again. Flames don't get back, and Cooper's trying to take it over. He's got eight. That's a staple of a Casey Alexander coach team, a lot like the Tar Heels of North Carolina. After makes from their opponent, they're shooting it back the other way. Five and a half to play in the half. Flames down eight. Cabell, Holmesley down the paint. Off balance, runner, good off the window. Holmesley's first basket. Team's not making it easy here today, Ryan. Other way, Matthews driving. He missed it. Rebound, Liberty. Here's McGee for the Flames to our left. Lavelle Cabell slow to get down the floor, waving at an official that he was elbowed. 18 to shoot. Flames down by six. Holmesley had his pocket picked by Asajula. He drives down and will lay it in. Six for Asajula off the bench. Back to an eight-point lead. Asajula just took that away from Caleb at the top of the key. Fever pitch now at Allen Arena. And another steal out front. This is Pepper. Missed the layup, though. Brick the layup. Here comes Liberty the other way. McGee right corner three. No good. Rebound Lipscomb. Here comes Matthews. Lipscomb by eight. Fleming right wing. Hill three over McGee. It's a brick. Rebound Liberty. The tension in this building. Man, you can cut it with a knife. 28-20 Lipscomb. 4.05 to play. Now the entire arena begins to chant defense. Liberty the ball. Down by eight. Cabell deep on the right by the Lipscomb bench. Will dribble against Cooper. James will screen. Cabell had his pocket picked. Man, here's Cooper. One on three to the rim. Blocked away by McGee. Taken by the Flames. What an athlete. One on three by Cooper. And McGee blocked his layup attempt. Back to Holmesley. Down by eight, Liberty the ball. Cuffy to the rack, layup good. Good cut right around Matthews. And again, it's that treadmill you hear about. Liberty's got to get some defensive stops down by six. Perfect set at the perfect time that time for Coach McKay. Pepper runs over Holmesley. Charging call on Eli Pepper. First on him, number five on Lipscomb. Media timeout on the floor, 3.15 to play in the half. Lipscomb 28, Liberty 22. This is Liberty basketball from Van Wagner. 6-1, to one, and they've been somewhat unforced. Liberty has had, a, in that last flurry, three just steals. Yep. No bad pass or anything. Well, and their pick six is AY. Yep. You know, these are, like you talk about, unforced. They're, they're clean picks, and they're easy buckets the other way. Six points off of turnovers for Lipscomb. Zero for Liberty. You know, it's a six-point ball game now with 3.15 left in the first half. Keegan McDowell checks in for Liberty. Sophomore from Cincinnati. Flames down by six. Keenan Gums also back in for the Flames. Scotty James on the floor with Lavelle and Georgie Pacheco Ortiz. James has it. Foul line. Hands off to McDowell. Now to Gums up top. Right wing to Cabell. Bounces into James against Marbury. To the rim. Floater no good. Follow no good. But a foul on Lipscomb inside. Keenan Gums comes in and gets a foul on Rob Marbury, his first, the sixth on Lipscomb, and Keenan Gums to the line, who had a three in the right corner by the Lipscomb bench a couple of minutes ago. Gums a 77% free throw shooter. First one's up and good. Red shirt senior transfer from Shriner University. Keenan Gums is a perfect, well, he was coming in, now he's, Five of six from the field in the tournament. Both free throws. He missed the second on the two-shot foul. 28-23. Lipscomb by five. They've had that five, six-point advantage through about the last eight or nine minutes. Michael Buckland has checked back in and throws it away. Eli Pepper screening, looking back at Buckland and saying, dude, I wasn't there for the pass. Yeah, we know. It ends up in Coach McKay's lap. And that was caused by Gums' off-ball defense that time, just up in the passing lane, denying like crazy, similar to what he did in the second affair here. 
in Allen Arena where created a couple of live ball turnovers and easy buckets the other way for Liberty. This is just the second turnover for Lipscomb. We'll see if Liberty can take advantage of it. Down by five, 231 to play in the first half. Cabell, top of the key to James. Right on top of the L of the Lipscomb font. And the gold at midcourt. Cabell down the paint. Floater by Lavelle. Got the roll. Little teardrop for Lavelle, his second basket. And the Flames pulling within three. 28-25, 2 to play in the half. Kenny Cooper driving in, dumps it down to Marbury. Layup is no good. Tap up no good. Rebound Liberty. Lavelle Cabell comes out of a wash. Taps his forehead with his right hand to set the offense. Coach McKay hops up and down like a pogo stick to get the Flames' attention. Liberty down by three, 149 to play in the half. Pacheco dribbling to the left wing near side. James there to screen. Georgie dribbles up top it, will drive into the paint. Little layup off the window, no good, but a foul called inside on Liberty, uh, on Lipscomb, pardon me, on a push. It's going to be on Kenny Cooper. His first and the seventh on Lipscomb. So now Georgie with a chance to pull the flames within two. Pacheco, 87% free throw shooter on the year. Shoots right-handed. First one's on the way. And got it. Liberty. Now three of four at the foul line. Flames were down by eight, 26 to 18. Right now it's a 6-2 run. Next free throw for Georgie. Got it. And the Flames pull within one. Pacheco with six points. 90 seconds left in the half. Cooper up top for Rose, right side to Moran. Moran dribbles into the paint, inside to Marbury, shoots over Scotty and missed it. Point blank range. Both teams have missed some bunnies in this half. This time it's the Liberty's advantage. Couldn't have asked for a better look that time for Lipscomb. Got it where they wanted and who they wanted to get it to. Just could not get it to fall. Liberty with a chance to take the lead here. Flames down one, 105 to play in the half with the ball. Pacheco dribbles hip high, top of the key with the left hand. Looks to his left, nothing there. Six to shoot. James will screen. Georgie with three. Pulls up. Foul line right elbow. Missed it short. Rebound Lipscomb. 50 seconds left. In the half, Bison's lead by one. Kenny Cooper. Top of the key to Marbury. Moran right wing. Matthews hasn't touched it in a while, Ryan. He averages 20 points on the year. Moran. Right side to Cooper. Guarded by Cabell. Now Matthews picked up by Cuff. Ten to shoot for Matthews. Lob into Marbury. Against James, right block, body on body, hook shot, missed it again. Rebound Liberty, shot clock off. 25 seconds remain in the half. Coach McKay says horns down with the right hand. 15 to shoot in the half. Liberty down one. Shot clock off. Game clock now at 10. Cabell at midcourt against Cooper. Clock at now five. Cabell. With three, driving to the rim, right block, layup is good with two on the clock. We go to halftime. Lavelle Cabell sending the Flames into halftime, leading by one. You can't ask for a better first half. This is high-level basketball. When you, when you look up at the scoreboard, AY, and it says 29-28, to 28, overall, that pace is in Liberty's favor. 20 minutes to go for a berth in the NCAA tournament. Halftime score here in Music City. Liberty 29, Lipscomb 28. Stay tuned. Steve Stilwell anchors our Runkin' Pratt halftime show after this on the Liberty Flames Sports Network from Van Wack. Alongside Ryan Maddox, I am Alan York. A couple things to chew on here. When Liberty leads at half like they are today, they're 25-2. and two. When Lipscomb is trailing at the half, they are 3-5. and five. Thank you, Steve Stilwell, for digging that out. Also, dug a little deeper, Lipscomb, when they score 69 points or fewer, they are 0-4, for 4, including 0-1 for 1 against Liberty in this building back on February 13th. Scary part about these guys is that they can score 60 and a half. They've shown it before, but Liberty, I mean, it's like a vice grip defensively. 
20 minutes to go. This is what March basketball is all about. Garrison Matthews will inbound it. The leading scorer in the league, 20 a game. Also is the A-Sun leader in career threes with 339. He had one in the first half, only one of five from the field. Claims a good job keeping number 24 in check. All right, underway here in the second half. 20 minutes to decide the A-Sun championship. Flames up by one. Here's a feed into Marbury. A little acrobatic hanging in the air. Shoots off the window and scores. Feed in from Pepper, and just like that, Lipscomb as he erased the Liberty halftime lead, 30-29. Scotty James holds it up high. Flames now to our right in front of their bench across the court from us. Pacheco into James against Marbury. Window, shoots, missed. Rebound, taking Lipscomb. See if the officials let the guys play on the inside. Cooper to the rack. Double clutch layup over Cabell. Is good. Back-to-back baskets by Lipscomb. They've Taking a three-point lead here in that, or a, yeah, three-point lead, 32-29. So quick start for Lipscomb, one minute in. Bison's lead by three. Cuffey, right side to Cabell, catches in front of our broadcast location. Dribbles to the paint, floater from the dotted line. Got it, Lavelle Cabell has eight. 32-31, Lipscomb by one. His float game is on point today. Matthews. Right wing to Buckland. Far right corner to Cooper. Good defense by Lavelle to shut him out of the paint. Pass up top to Buckland. Near side to Pepper. Now to Cooper. Foul line. Gets around to Marbury's screen. Offensive foul. We saw it from here. He gave an elbow right in Lavelle's chin. And that's a great call by Steve Anderson, one of our officials. Second on Marbury. And the first of Lipscomb here in the half. Ball inbounded to Pacheco. Flames down one. 18-26 to play in the A-Sun Championship in Nashville. Pacheco, first half had six points. Dribbles up top, hip high with left hand. Reverses it over to the right. Pauses it. Now lobs it left corner to Cabell. He'll catch it by the Flames bench. Will drive Buckland into the paint. Goes to Pacheco right corner with seven. Georgie to the rack against Cooper, off balance, shot falling down. And Pacheco's got eight. And the Flames back in front by one, 33-32. Veteran point guard absorbed a lot of contact on that one. Pepper hands off to Marbury. Guarded arm's length by Cuffey, right wing pass to Buckland. Buckland left side to Matthews, left alone for three. Got it, high arcing three by the banners that hang down from Allen Arena. Matthews has seven. Lipscomb back in front by two, 35-32. Cabell, near wing right. Dribbles to the Lipscomb logo up midcourt. Now to the foul line for Cuffey. Inside to James, left block. Zips it, right corner. Pacheco for three. Yes! Georgie with 11. Lanes back in front by one, 36-35. Ball whipping around the perimeter. Liberty continues to make the extra pass. Buckland left side to Cooper. On the arc against Cabell. Left corner Matthews. Matthews passes, chest pass up to Buckland. Dribbles off to the right wing near his team's bench. Hooks the pass into Marbury on the block. Against James. Hook shot over Scotty off balance. Got the roll. Marbury with 10. Lipscomb seesaws back in front, 37-36. 16-42 to play in the ball game. Pacheco dribbling out on the right wing. Now back out, about 25 feet out. Peers over to Coach McKay across the court. Takes the high dribble now to the foul circle. Up top now to Holmesley. He'll dribble down the paint. Out to Cuffey, right wing three. Got it. Whoa, Elijah Cuffey. Nothing but net. His first basket. Liberty back in front by two. And what do we got? A foul away from the ball on Scotty James. 39-37. Foul on James, his first. And the first of the half for Liberty. Matt Rose, senior from Lexington, Kentucky. And Nathan Moran, senior from Franklin, Tennessee. And for Lipscomb Rose, kind of an X factor. He had 17 Kind of exploded late in that game against NJIT. 
So far hasn't scored in this game. Flames will sub in Keenan Gums and Darius McGee. Here's a feed into Marbury. Goes around James and scores. A little out of balance defense there as Marbury, he's got 12 and ties the game at 39. 15.55 to play. Got a media timeout next whistle. Tied at 39. We've had 11 lead changes and only two ties. Cabell penetrates to the rack. Layup good by Cooper. Looks at his teammate like, man, can you help me out? <laughs> Cabell's got 10. Flames up 41-39. Moran dribbling to the paint. No shot. Looking for Matthews. He's cut off by Cuffey just following him like a shadow. Matthews in the right corner. Holds it high above his head. He'll drive Cuffey to the baseline jumper. Good from 18 feet out. You can't beat the defense Cuff had there. Game tied at 41. Garrison Matthews shoots considerably lower percentage off the bounce. That right there was just a conference player of the year type play. 15.05 to play in the game. Tied at 41. Ticket to the NCAA tournament on the line here in Nashville. Cabell left wing. Cuffey. Good defense by Matthews. Shut him off on the drive. Pass back out to Cabell with eight. Lavelle moves off of James Pick to the inline right. Little floater. Couldn't get it to go. Rebound taken by Lipscomb. Here's Matthews. Got to watch where he goes. He dribbles front court. Runs right over Cuffey. And a charging call on Matthews the other way. The fans beside themselves. We go to media timeout. 14.40 left to play. 41 apiece. This is the A-Sun Championship on the Liberty Flames Sports Network from Van Wagner. All right, thanks a lot, Steve. One ticket's already been punched today. Gardner-Webb upends Radford at 76-65. DJ Laster had 32 points to give Gardner-Webb its first ever trip to the big dance. And that game was at Radford, just like the one last year. Liberty lost at the Horn on a Carly Jones three. 14.40 14.40 left to play after the Garrison Matthews foul on the charge. That was his first and the second on Lipscomb. We're tied at 41. Teams combined here, folks, 11 for 13 in the second half from the field. Liberty led by one at half, and we're in for a fantastic finish. Gums, number five in blue. Back door to Cuffey, layup, count it, and one. you got to love the look when a team gets ejected when they don't play defense. Matthews and Asajula, man, they look like they don't have any cookies left for dessert. You see the chemistry there from Mayo Baxter-Bell and the high post, the postman, been able to find guys from that spot all year long. Beautiful bounce pass and one opportunity here. Free throw, Cuffey, got it. Flames up by 4, 44-41, and that is their biggest lead so far. 14-20 left to play. That was the third foul on Lipscomb in the half. Bison's the ball to our left. Moran bounces in Asadula against Baxter Bell. Skips it. Right wing rose for three. Bricked it. Rebound taken. Comfy for Liberty. That last foul, by the way, was on Asadula. His second. Flames lead by three, 13.55 to play here in Nashville. Liberty the ball. Cabell, top of the key. Right wing to McGee. He'll let it fly. And it bricked off, almost wedged in between the glass and the rim, but it fell off to the right to Lipscomb. Liberty leads by three. Bison's the ball to our left. 13.36 to play. There's a backdoor to Rose. Got around Gums, and Gums fouled him from behind. That's three on Keenan Gums. And the second on Liberty. That was just a quick fake left. I'm going to go right. Keenan couldn't keep up with him. He'll go to the bench as Holmesley and Pacheco come back in. Coach McKay making some interesting adjustments on Garrison Matthews off the ball. Switched from Lavelle to Elijah mid-possession that time. Inbounds Moran for three. Bricked it. Rebound Liberty. And again, Pacheco will slow the pace as the local sitting right now all around the Allen Arena. 13.50 to play, or 15 to play. Baxter Bell to the rim. Layup no good. Rebound by Lipscomb. Bison's move right to left, down by three. Cooper, right wing to Moran. Right by the Lipscomb bench. Ball fake, no shot. 
Bounces into Asadula against Baxter Bell. He'll drive around him to the rim. Lip, good. Asadula, uh, he's a good player. He is. He's skilled. May have gotten away with a hook on that one, but either way, quick hips on the, the quick spin move to the opposite side of the rim. 12.50 to play. Liberty leads 44-43. Baxter Bell to Holmesley up top against Matthews. We'll take him to the rack left window. It's up and no good. Holmesley ends up in the Flames bench. Here comes Cooper against Pacheco. Now to Matthews, baseline right, goes up off the baseline and missed it. Rebound and a foul on Cuffey, his second. That's the third on Liberty. And Garrison Matthews will go to the line for two shots. That was an example of how quickly the Bisons will get out in transition. Five on four opportunity as Caleb hits the deck. Free throw for Matthews, good. He's got 10, he's in double figures, ties the game at 44. Cuffey out, Baxter Bell out for Liberty as Cabell, Holmesley, Pacheco, Ortiz come back in. This game has been tied now three times. Had 11 lead changes. Garrison Matthews. Third all-time leading score, Lipscomb. Over 2,300 points. Free throw good. He's got 11. And Lipscomb back in front, 45-44. Flames in the blue today as the lower seed. Lipscomb in their home white. A partisan crowd here, but decent contingent of Liberty fans across the court behind their bench to our right. That's where Georgie Pacheco is dribbling right now against Kenny Cooper. Pacheco on the right wing with 16 to shoot. Up top to James. Now back out to Georgie right wing. Back to James up top. He'll dribble foul circle down the paint. Finds Holmesy down low on the block left. Good. Caleb Holmesy kind of just hanging out. <laughs> Nobody found him. And now a steal by Lavelle Cabell at midcourt. He has numbers to the lane. James layup. Missed it. Cabell rebound. Left wing Pacheco. He'll drive in the paint. Back out to Cabell. He'll take it down. Teardrop. Floater no good. And a whistle. Foul inside on Lipscomb. Foul on Eli Pepper. We go to a media timeout. 11.43 left to play. Liberty 46. Lipscomb 45. This is Liberty Basketball from Van Wagner. Rob Marbury's got 12. And 11 for Garrison Matthews. I was just looking at the stats. You look at Lipscomb. Oh, three in double figures. Liberty one in double figures. But Liberty's up by one. Yep. Just the, mir- the mirage of when you see numbers and you look up. Liberty... Again, getting more shots in the second half, plus five on the field goal attempts. Yep, and it's a balanced effort like you talk about, A-Way. We've had eight guys to score points in this game. That's what it takes to win championships on the road. Flames lead by one, 46-45 with the ball to our right. 11-41 to play. Liberty in the blue, Lipscomb in the white. McGee holds it up high, left wing pass to Pacheco. Georgie has a James pick but looks to the left. Coach McKay still directing the offense. Georgie. On the left wing, now moves off of James Pick to the foul line. Right wing, Holmesy for three. Splash down. Holmesy's got seven. Flames go up by four again, their biggest lead. Set play, came off a double stagger on the weak side. Stepped into it, beautiful shot. Lipscomb the ball now to our left, down by four. Inside of Sajula, muscles James in the block and turned it over. Right off his foot, out of bounds. Flames contingent back behind their bench standing right now as the Flames lead by four, matching their biggest lead. Georgie Pacheco for Liberty. Flames in the second half, 8 of 15 from the field and 3 of 4 from three-point range. Liberty to our right, McGee, left wing against Matthews. Dribbles into the end line, no shot to James up top. Scotty now to Caleb. Holmesby dribbles, left elbow, back down to James. He's tied up. And the possession error will go to Liberty. Nice job by Michael Buckland to tie Scotty up inside to force the alternate possession. But Liberty will keep it with eight to shoot, leading by four. 10.45 to play in the ballgame. Cabell to inbound it. 
McGee off his screen left corner with six. Darius on the arc now with four. To the top of the key for three. Back of the rim, no good. Pepper the rebound for Lipscomb. Just about halfway home here in the second half. Matthews up top for three. Got it. High stepping as he backpedals to the backcourt. He's got 14. Liberty by one. 49-48, and here come the locals decked out in the gold and purple. Cabell, 15 to shoot, right wing, up top to McGee, left wing to Holmesley, answer for three, rimmed out no good, up top, rebound Lipscomb. Bison's down one, 9.59 to play. Asajula, right side to Buckland, inside to Cooper, got around Georgie and scored on the block. Cooper with 12, and Lipscomb's back in front by one, 50-49. Liberty in the blue, dribbles front court, 9.40 to play in the ball game. Liberty down one. McGee, left wing, up top to Holmesley, catches top of the key against Matthews with 10 to shoot. James will pick, Holmesley goes off it, zips it right corner, Cabell three, got it! Lavelle Cabell for three, he's got 13. Timeout called by Liberty. We'll go full. 9-24 to play in the A-Sun Championship. Liberty 52, Lipscomb 50. This is Liberty Basketball from Van Wagner. Uh, four for seven from deep. One defensive adjustment the Flames need to make, A-Y, giving up two buckets easy in the paint off of rear screens in the half court to Lipscomb. So their point guard's kicking it out to the wing and, and then taking a rear screen, getting an open look. Uh, down low for easy layups, cannot get those easy buckets up in a two-point game. You hear back screens a lot. You don't hear re- rear screen. Right. Break that down for those folks tuning in right now. Well, that's these are actions where you're trying to get the ball in close to the basket instead of a pin-down screen. All, all fans have typically heard of that where Garrison Matthews may come out towards you know the three-point line to catch a shot from deep. They'll set screens, five guys spaced out around the perimeter where they're sending guys rear screen Back to the backboard so somebody opens up middle of the lane for an open look. 9.24 to play from Allen Arena in Nashville. The A-Sun Championship on the line. Liberty denied at the doorstep last year, losing to Radford 55-52. While Lipscomb won their first tournament championship at Florida Gulf Coast last year. Liberty 52, Lipscomb 50, Bison's the ball to our left. Buckland hands off, left wing to Rose. Chest pass up top to Matthews, right side to Cooper. 15 fit out with Cuff. Cooper looks into Marbury, nothing there. Now Rose right wing, back to Cooper on the block. Ball inside to Marbury, poked away by James with seven to shoot. It will be inbounded by Lipscomb with nine minutes to play. Liberty leads 52-50. Midcourt to Cooper, now with five. Cooper hands off Buckland, right wing three. Good. His first basket of the game has given Lipscomb the lead back right by his own bench, 53-52. Right behind a dribble handoff, something that Liberty struggled with the past three games. Flames the ball down by one, 8.40 left to play, 53-52. Scotty James looks to his left, nothing there. Flames kind of stagnant right now. Cuffey on the handoff. Left corner to Pacheco, pull up, teardrop left, baseline good, eight feet out for Georgie. He gives Liberty the lead back. He's got 13, 54-53 Liberty. Bison's the ball, 8.15 to play to our left, Matthews. Marbury post. Feed goes up top to Rose. Right corner to Cooper. Matthews off his screen. Cooper dribbled off his foot. Oh, wow. Coach McKay says, wait a minute. Take a look at that. Please do. And now they're going to call it off of Liberty. And Georgie Oxy goes thumbs up. It was off of us. Got to love the Christian values of the Liberty students. Here's Marbury on the inbounds. Picks up the dribble at the foul line. Hands off to Matthews. Inside to Marbury. Threw it away. Matthews looking at him like, you got to be kidding me. I'm the best player. I can score. I can pass, and you let me down. That's what you would call negative EQ. The emotional quotient Liberty has. Lipscomb at times just does not. 
We go to a media timeout, 7.59 to play in our game. Liberty ball when we come back, leading 54-53. This is Liberty basketball from Van Wagner. That's not going to continue, although they're not going to shoot 35.3 like they did in the first half. Things will balance out if Liberty keeps knocking down these threes. It's a good sign for the future. For the ball game, Liberty 22 of 47, Lipscomb 22 of 46. One shot separates the two, one point does as well. 7.59 7.59 to play as Liberty inbounds it to James. He'll get it back to the trailer, Pacheco. Number 11 in blue, guarded by Cooper, just about at midcourt. Georgie now clears the timeline, hands off to Holmesley. Near midcourt, dribbles off to the left wing, cross court from us. 16 to shoot for Liberty, flames by one. Holmesley, right wing to Cuffey, dribbles to the foul line, now out to Cabell with nine. Lavelle around Pepper to the paint, left block, shot blocked away by Marbury. Wow. Bisons have numbers. Cooper, left corner Matthews, goes around. Georgie to the rim. Layup no good, but a foul inside on Liberty. That was a nice block by Rob Marbury the other way. It basically leads the Bisons into a fast break like you're talking about. A five on four advantage offensively for Lipscomb as the A-Sun player of the year steps to the line for another two. Garrison Matthews, 14 points in this game. Been in double figures his last 21. A-Sun player of the year with two shots. Free throw. Got it. Ties the game up at 54. That is the fifth tie in this game. Matthews with 15. Next free throw for number 24. Gives Lipscomb the lead. 55-54, 55 54, 721 left to go in the game. Flames down by one. Cuffey brings it front court for Liberty by the Flames bench left wing. Lob into James. He'll catch on the block. Layup. Good right block. Came left to right as he likes to do. His first basket of the second half gives the Flames the lead back by one. 56 55. Bison's the ball. And a bad pass by Matthews. Just lobbed it inside to Marbury. And nobody there. Some uncharacteristic, just veteran guys out there not making veteran plays for Lipscomb in this second half. Flames up by one. They continue to push up full court, Allen, with this full court man-to-man, trying to speed Liberty up. Flames doing a nice job setting their own pace. Yep, hadn't worked yet. We were tipped off about that before the game. We said we'll see how it works out. It has not right now. Flames by one, 643 to play. James just scored the last basket for the Flames to put them up. Cuffy to Holmesley. Foul circle. Bounces into James. Goes up. Double clutch layup from the left block is good. Scotty's got 11. Flames up 58 55. And now a whistle and a foul on Elijah Cuffy. That'll be number four on the sophomore from Polka, West Virginia. Number five on Liberty is Darius McGee will have to go to the bench. Elijah Cuffey distraught as he heads back to the Flames bench across the court. McGee will come in, had a basket in the first half. Flames up by 3, 58-55 as Scotty James has scored the last four for Liberty. Six and a half to play here in Nashville. Marbury on the inbounds, hands off to Matthews. Right wing three, bricked off to the left, rebound in the corner, out of bounds to Liberty. We have one media timeout coming. Looking behind the Flames bench, Richie McKay's daughter Ellie is standing up behind the bench with Richie's wife Julie and Associate AD Mickey Garitti there watching, looking on here as we are at the standing vantage point. Flames up by three as we watch Liberty scrimmage off to our right. Cabell, top of the key. To Holmesley for three. In and out, no good. Rebound Lipscomb. 5.48 to play. Liberty 58, Lipscomb 55. Cooper, right side to Buckland. Back to Cooper on the right arc. Dribbles knee high a couple of times. Goes back to Buckland. Now to the corner for Pepper. Lobs into Marbury. Marbury against James. Gets to the rim. Floater good with the left hand. Marbury's got 14. Liberty leads by one, 5.26 to play. Pacheco looking to inbound it, does so to Cabell. Back to Georgie. 
Number 11 in blue will dribble front court. 5-16 to play. Flames up by one. Pacheco. Left sideline by the Flames bench near midcourt. 15 to shoot. Skips it near side to Holmesley. 30 feet out on the right. He'll dribble to midcourt with 10. Caleb looks up at the clock. It flashes eight. It has Pepper in front of him. Caleb down the paint. Left wing to Cabell. Three. Got another one. Lavelle Cabell with 16. Liberty leads by 4-4. Four, four, 50 to play. Another inside out three. Caleb gets a foot in the paint. Draw some help. Matthews to the rim. Layup no good. Follow no good. Rebound McGee for Liberty. Scotty James is slow to get up. He's holding his mouth right now. Coach McKay at midcourt standing beside trainer Aaron Schreiner. And we're going to look and see if the officials go to the monitor for any extracurricular activity. They will not as of right now. Scotty's up now, breathing heavily, but looks to be okay. Lipscomb, three and five when they trail at halftime. They're down four here, 440 to play. How tight does that necktie get for Lipscomb in this situation? Well, it really does, A.Y., because this is a team that wins their games on average by over 15 points per game as the referees step to the side. Looks like they may review this one. No foul was called as McGee ended up with the loose change on the rebound. And Coach McKay's at midcourt. He's getting heated right now. Georgie Pacheco pushes him back. Brad Susie pushes him back. Coach looks at Brad and says, I'm good. And the officials are going to go to the monitor. <laughs> you think these two teams want it? Wow, oh, this yeah, crowd is into it. This, What an atmosphere. Students to our right and behind him saying, tee us up. And somebody in the Flames huddle just said something kind of humorous because they're all getting hyped up right now. And Coach McKay's in the middle of that huddle saying, look, we're up by four, 440 left to go. This is our pace. This is our game. And now the locals are booing that. <laughs> this March Madness here, folks. This is what you get, especially in a venue where the regular season champion gets to host. It makes that regular season so valuable. Flames with a chance here to make this a three-possession game if they can knock down a three. So, yeah. yep, they do go to the monitor. No blood, no foul. And Liberty will inbound it, leading 61-57. Lavelle Cabell and Scotty James have scored the last seven points for Liberty. Lavelle had the last basket on a three-pointer. Now James and Marbury jawing back and forth at midcourt. And Scotty looks back at him and says, I'll meet you on the block, number zero. Ball comes inbounded. 4.30 to play, and now Lipscomb really picks up the defensive pressure, something we haven't really seen so far. Pacheco, right wing, Cabell, and an offensive foul on Scotty James. Lipscomb might have baited him into that. And Scotty's an emotional player, but you got to keep composure here. Second on Scotty, the sixth on Liberty. Like you talk about, partner, this is where Liberty has to show their maturity defensively. Up four. About four minutes left. Lipscomb still 10 of 12 from the field. Now they update 11 for 15 here in the half. Liberty by four, 14 to play. Cooper against Pacheco at the A-Sun logo in the paint. Scores. Cooper's got 14. It's a two-point game. Liberty leads 61-59. 4-0-2 to play. Pepper fouls Holmesley from behind. That'll be team foul number five on Lipscomb, the third on Pepper, and that'll take us to our final media timeout. 3.58 to play. Liberty 61, Lipscomb 59. This is the A-Sun Championship on the Liberty Flames, Flames Sports Network from Van Wagner. left to play, and this is going to be the finish, folks, of the A-Sun Basketball Tournament Championship from Nashville, Tennessee. Liberty 61, Lipscomb 59. And to say the tension has ratcheted up 
tenfold would be an understatement. It's palpable in here. This is where your two first team all A Sun performers are going to come up big. Caleb Holmesley and Scotty James. They've had a lot of success in the middle of the floor, AY, in ball screen situations. Not just passing the wall to each other and making stuff happen, but drawing enough help to find other guys for open threes. A couple more of those, they may be looking at an A Sun tournament championship. Three and double figures for both teams. Garrison Matthews leads the game with 16. 14 for Lavelle Cabell. Georgie Pacheco's got 13. And the Flames will inbound it. End game update brought to you by Carter Bank and Trust. 16 to shoot for Liberty, leading by two. Lavelle Cabell bounces to Holmesley, top of the key, with 10 to shoot. Caleb around Pepper to the rim and is fouled as Caleb falls down. Pepper will be assessed his fourth foul. That is the sixth on Lipscomb as Caleb... Gets up off the deck. Caleb hobbling a little bit. His numbers today, magnificent. Seven points, six rebounds, team high eight assists. And they show the replay on the monitor. Getting some boo birds from the fans here. Cabell to line for two shots, free throw. Book it. I said Cabell. Holmesley, pardon me. He's got eight. Just to make it a two-possession game, huge free throws. The Flames have knocked them down all season long. Holmesley with one more. His first trip to the line today. Free throw. Got it. 63-62. Or 59. Holmes with nine. Flames lead by four. 63-59. 3.44 to play. Lipscomb comes front court. 3.37 to play. Trailing by four. Cooper. Left wing to Matthews for three. Big shot. Matthews with 19. Timeout. Lipscomb. It's a one-point game. Big-time players make big-time shots. One student just behind us said, we love you. <laughs> so Matthews excites the crowd with 19. You've got to look and, and possibly here, you know, Lipscomb has shown some of this full-court pressure in the few close games that they've had this year. Late in games when they're down, maybe not this possession, but if they're down three, four points with two minutes to go, Liberty has got to be ready for a run and jump trap. Okay. Handle that. Be strong with the basketball. Step to the line. Knock down one and one situations. Looking at the scoreboard sheet, they've got Lavelle Cabell with 14. I've got him with 16. And they've got Cuffy with eight. I've got Cuffy with five. Nonetheless, Liberty leads by one, 63-62. With 3.29 left. Ball comes inbound to Cabell. He'll give it back to Pacheco. Ortiz. And number 11 in blue will weave the dribble up to the front court. Off a Holmesy screen to the top. Pacheco now in the right wing with 15 to shoot. Top of the key to James. Flames look a little uncomfortable offensively now with nine. Cabell's got it. At the top of the key with seven. Moves off of James Pick. Right wing to Pacheco with three. Dribbles at the right wing. Three is up. Short. James tapped it up. Rebound taken by Lipscomb. Liberty by one. 2.52 to play. Cooper for Lipscomb. Top of the key. Right wing to Buckland. Right corner now for Jake Wolf. Inside to Marbury. Marbury against James. Right block. Hooks over him and scores. Lipscomb's back in front. 2.33 to play. 64-63, our 20th lead change. Pacheco driving to the rim, layup no good. James offensive put back, good off the window. Scotty giving the Flames a lead back, and Scotty was knocked down on the layup and then got up, was knocked down again. 
And the officials blow the whistle. There was a Buckland on James. What did you see there? Yeah, they just got tangled up a little bit. I was looking down to see if Liberty was checking Garrison Matthews in transition because the Bisons like to push it so far and so fast. Now the officials will go to the monitor just to see. When I look back, Scotty was mid-air. I so heard, something. Happened. I was looking I mean, down, was and I heard Scotty hit the hardwood. I looked up, and he's on his back. Yeah. Wow. And both teams play a very physical style on the inside, and Scotty was complaining that he got fouled on that follow when he fell down the first time. And the three officials go to the monitor. Now they're going to talk about it at midcourt. Liberty leads by one, 2-16 to play. Ticket to the NCAA tournament on the line. Liberty's been three other times. Last one coming in 2013. Lipscomb has been once. That was last year. And now the officials going back to the monitor to take a look at things. A.Y., one thing I will say, if the Bisons retain possession here, late game, what they trend in close games, they like to run a lot of ball reversal, end up with a cross screen to get Rob Marbury a touch on that right block. Scotty James has got to stay down, keep his composure, and keep him as far away from that bucket and away from his right shoulder if possible. Make him go baseline. He's had a nice touch with that left hand all second half. Lavelle Cowbell with 13, Georgia Pacheco Ortiz, Scotty James both with 13. Holmesy's got nine, Cuffey's got eight. Kenny Gums has four. So no foul called as Scotty James got tangled up with Michael Buckland. 2.16 to play, Liberty 65, Lipscomb 64. Flames led by one at halftime. Neither team has been able to stretch out the lead in this second half. Liberty's biggest lead of the game has been four, and Lipscomb led by eight twice in the first half. Lipscomb the ball after Scotty James put Liberty in front with 2.15 to play. 65-64 Liberty. Cooper down the paint, hanging. Cuffey blocked him. Charging call on Kenny Cooper. Cuffey went up. The whistle came, and a charging call on Cooper. Georgie Pacheco-Ortiz steps ask. right in front. Yep, just outside the restricted circle. Like you're talking about, though, A.Y. Cuffey had a clean block if that was not called a charge. Either way, Flames possession, 208 left here in the second half. Cuffey being very aggressive with four fouls. At this point in time in March, Ticket to the big dance on the line. You got to be aggressive. 65 64, Liberty by one, 208 to play after the Lipscomb turnover, which is their sixth of the half. Liberty still with only one. Georgie to inbound it. Does so, right corner to the Cabell, back to Georgie. 205 to play. Liberty leads by one, 65 64. Caleb Holmesley will dribble it front court. Hands off to Cabell, left sideline. Lavelle Cabell, guarded by Buckland. On the wing with 16 to shoot. Lavelle, now to Holmesy up top. Flames by one, 149 to play. Right wing to Pacheco. Georgie to James, top of the key with six. James down the paint, going out of bounds. Poked out of bounds by Lipscomb with four on the possession. Flames will have to inbound it. With four to shoot, leading by one. Cabell to inbound it. Does so to James, right key, back to Cabell, right corner three at the horn. Short rebound, Lipscomb. 136 to play, Liberty leading by one. Matthews to the rim, layup, no good. What do we got? A foul called on Liberty with 131 left. They'll call Caleb Holmesley for a push. Coach McKay smiling with his hands in his suit pants. Late whistle there. Did not hear the whistle until that ball was off of the rim and in possession of the Flames. 
Have to adjust here. 131 left, down, <clears throat> up one. Have to anticipate he's going to make both of these. You can run the baseline on a made second free throw. Gareth and Matthews leading all scores with 19 points. Free throw for the tie. Got it. He's got 20. 56th game, he's had 20 or more points. 65 apiece, 131 to play. Next free throw by Matthews. On the way, got them both. Lipscomb goes in front by one. Matthews with 21. One thirty-one left. Pacheco to inbound. Looking, does to James, poked out of bounds by whom? By Lipscomb, right by the Lipscomb bench. They want it the other way, Asajula against James, and Asajula poked it out of bounds. Lipscomb head coach Casey Alexander says go take a look at it. And they will. Got to be honest, partner. I think that one was off of Scotty. Looked like a double tip really quickly. Either way, Flames should still touch this basketball at least twice, even if they're on defense here down one. Lips come up 66-65. Coach McKay now having a friendly conversation with one of the officials as they check to see on the inbounds pass that Georgie had on the end line. He passed it. Pretty much outside the right wing near the Lipscomb bench. Asajal and James both went for it. It ricocheted out of bounds. The original call was out of bounds to Liberty. And we do have a monitor, but it's about five people away from us. And they'll get the right call eventually. And now the officials, all three of them, chatting. One of the officials goes back to the monitor. 1.30 remain. Lipscomb 66, Liberty 65. Flames had the lead by one. Their last possession, when the ball was knocked out of bounds, had six to shoot on the inbounds. Lavelle Cabell missed a jumper in the corner. Lipscomb had the rebound. Garrison Matthews was fouled. And... He made two free throws to put Lipscomb in front. 131 remaining. Neither team has a foul to give. Liberty has one timeout left. Lipscomb has two. And the official's going to a separate monitor. And the alternate official, John Dillon, who is sitting behind the scores table across from us, may be getting a better look. Again, for those just tuning in, Lipscomb leads by one, 66-65 with 130 left. Ball inbounded, and it's going to be to Lipscomb. Lipscomb had two free throws. They made them. Liberty inbounding had... Scotty James and Hassan Asajula both converge on the inbounds ball. It was poked out of bounds, and they go to the monitor, and they call it off of Scotty James. Flames have got to be prepared for Rob Marbury trying to get a touch on that right block. Biggest defensive possession of the year, goes without saying. 130 remaining in the A-Sun Championship. Lipscomb 66, Liberty 65. Buckland to inbound it, does so to Matthews. Passes out to Cooper. Cooper on the right wing with 26 to shoot. Dribbles to the top of the key into a double team. Mutes that dribble, goes left side to Rose. Rose hands off to Matthews, 18 to shoot. Dribbles foul circle. Good defense and a bad pass. Good defense by Cabell. Bad pass inside, stolen by Holmesley. Flames down by one with 108 to play. Georgie Pacheco with the ball at midcourt. A costly turnover for Lipscomb. Lavelle Campbell, left wing, lobs into James, catches on the block, layup. Good with 55 seconds left. Scotty James puts Liberty up 67-66. Lipscomb the ball back. Matthews going in line. Dumps it off for Marbury. Layup, no good. Battle for the rebound out of bounds. Sue Lipscomb 
with 45 seconds left. Scotty James giving Liberty the lead. He's got 15 points with 45 seconds left. Cabell deep on the left wing. Great pass on the inside. We have seen that from Scotty all year long, Ryan. Well, and they cleared that whole side out. It was four out, one in. On a ball reversal, Scotty's able to pin his man so that he's closest to the rim. Picture perfect entry pass on the lob. Scotty catches with two hands, goes straight up on the opposite side of the rim. One point lead for Liberty. And now the officials, after Litscombe took the ball back down, there was a flurry at the rim. Ball was hit out of bounds. And it's going to be Lipscomb ball again. And again, you said, Ryan, Flames have their biggest defensive possession. Last time, they force a turnover. And now, they'll have to do it again. Ball inbounded to Cooper on the right wing. Bounces into Marbury, left block against James. Step back to floater. In and out, no good. Liberty the rebound. 37 seconds left. Seven seconds separate the clocks. Lipscomb does not have to foul yet. Lavelle Cabell in the front court. Liberty leads 67-66. Cabell dribbling near midcourt against Buckland. Shot clock at 14. Time out Liberty. Flames the lead and the ball. 21 seconds in the game. 14 seconds on the possession. And that is the final Liberty timeout. Lipscomb still has two. Scotty James giving Liberty the lead. 45 seconds left. Lipscomb came down, had two possessions, really. Had a ball knocked out of bounds off a missed shot. Got the ball back. And then Rob Marbury. Okay, I'm going to be critical of Marbury. Yep. No hook. He stepped back. He did. He hasn't done that all game long. Missed a shot. Liberty gets the rebound. Yep. Tried to go over his left shoulder as opposed to the right, which he's so adept at. Liberty ball, the, the biggest hurdle here for the Flames is going to be inbounding the basketball. Okay, once that's done, it's 14 on the shot clock. You've got to get the ball in the hands of your best playmaker. In my opinion tonight, that's Caleb Holmesley. Doesn't necessarily mean he's going to score a bucket, but he's done a little bit of everything. Eight assists, he can draw that help, kick it out, possibly for an open three for another Flame. 21 seconds remain. Liberty 67, Lipscomb 66. Scotty James today, 15 points, seven rebounds, one of three and double figures for Liberty. 21 seconds in the game, 14 on the possession for Liberty. Again, Lipscomb does not have to foul. Cuffey will inbound it by the Flames bench across the court from us. Liberty leads by one, 21 seconds left. Cuffey inbounds it, cross the paint to James. He catches with 12, up top to Cabell. Cabell left corner to Georgie for three. Got it! 14 seconds left. Pacheco with the three. Gives Liberty a four-point lead. Here comes Lipscomb. Cooper to the rim. Marbury layup. Good. Nine seconds left. Oh, man, Ryan, we're going down to the wire. All the contingencies have been worked out here. 9.4 on the clock. You're up two. Probably going to be up one. You can run the baseline. Coach McKay, no doubt, calling a set play. May throw it to another inbounder, which we've seen numerous times in the vines this year, AY. Georgie Pacheco waving the Liberty fans to their feet to our right. Rob Marbury at the line for an and one. 70-68 Liberty. Shot clock off, game clock shows 9.4. Marbury, the lefty, free throw is up. It is short, no good. James the rebound. Lipscomb the foul with 8.4 remaining. Coach McKay looks back at his associate head coach, Brad Soucy. They confer for a minute. The Flames, five on the floor. They huddle at midcourt. They're saying, let's go. We got this. Scotty James, it's only fitting Ryan. He's at the line for what's going to be a one and one he steps up to the line obviously the biggest free throws of his career with a chance to make it a two possession game but the flames have got to be alert and focused defensively here the biggest assignment is who finds garrison matthews make or miss on these free throws 
A one and one for Scotty James. Liberty at the line today, seven of eight. Flames lead by two, 8.4 remain. Free throw, Scotty. Good! 71 68. Liberty now leads by three. James with 16, 8.4 remaining. Ryan Maddox, here's the big one. Ice in his veins on the first one. Scotty at the line, made the first, 8.4 remaining. Liberty leads by three. The junior from Tarpon Springs, Florida. Free throw number two. Got it! Liberty by four, 8.4 remaining. 17 for Scotty. 72 68 Liberty. Coach McKay calling for the pressure, trying to keep that ball in front to bleed some of this clock. 8.4. Matthews to inbound it. Does so to Cooper. Back to Matthews. Liberty by four. Game clock at five. Matthews up top for three. It rims out no good. Rebound Liberty. Foul with one second remaining. The game is not over yet. Casey Alexander beside himself right now with one of the officials. Liberty leads 72-68. One second remaining. Caleb Holmesy will go to the line for a one and one. Coach Alexander was begging for a technical call there as the Liberty bench so excited and rightfully so. Not going to get it today as Caleb steps to the line. Liberty by four, one second remaining. Some choice words that we won't repeat from the Lipscomb students to our right. One and one for Holmesley at the line. The praying Manis, free throw, good. 73-68, Lavelle Cabell down and a catcher stance to our left. Georgie meeting him as well. This is what... Oh, man. It's all about. <laughs> 73-68, Holmesy free throw. Got it. One second left. Lipscomb will inbound it, and the clock will run out. Liberty is the 2019 A-Sun champions. The mob scene right in front of our broadcast location. 74-68. Light the tower and light them up. The Liberty Flames are going to the NCAA tournament for the fourth time in school history. Ryan Maddox. Incredible ball game here in Nashville. This team just put the exclamation point on what was beyond a fantastic season. It was special, AY. We've talked about it all year long. You had to come to the defending A-Sun champions home court and beat them for a second time in this building. I wonder what seed Liberty's going to get in the big dance. Yeah. I mean, this, this team, you know, they're approaching 30 wins, folks. And to cap it off with a conference championship, you could not be more proud. 28-6, and six, Liberty improves, cutting down the nets here in mere moments. The A-Sun champion in 2019. Wow. Oh. And you've got to give credit to Lipscomb as well. I mean, what a great team. They came out and shot like gangbusters. Second half, 15 for 22 from the field. Garrison Matthews was added as advertised, but the Flames were just too good in the end. Huge shot by Georgie Pacheco in the corner. His three with about 30 seconds left gave Liberty a four-point lead. The 2019 A Sun champion, Liberty Flames. Live here courtside in Nashville. Flames getting the T-shirts and the championship caps. They were at the doorstep a year ago. They were denied. Last second buzzer beater by Radford. Fueled their motivation during the summer into this offseason. And going into this season, Ryan, you knew this could be that team. And their first ever A-Sun venture, the Flames are going dancing. And that's Coach McKay's vision. You know, he talked about in your preseason interviews with him, A-Y, how he wants to build a program, not just, you know, a year, a good team to have a great season. He wants a great program. This is the the first step. It's just unbelievable to step into a new conference 
and really dominate. You know, that second half of the year, one slip up meant that they had to come here yep. To, yep. to capture this title, but they did it in emphatic yep. fashion down the stretch. Wow. wow. Unbelievable <laughs> atmosphere right now as Coach McKay, tears in his eyes, walking over to the ESPN table, Westwood One Radio, and Coach McKay, proud of you, proud of you. Congrats. Yes. Got this <laughs> up here. Lavelle Cabell coming over. He's going to get on the radio as well with Coach McKay. And Lavelle will put the headset on Lavelle. Lavelle, congratulations, my man. Emotions right now, 2019 champion going to the big dance. It just feels good, man. We put in so much work, so much work to get to this point. Uh, we, we have some guys we waited four years to get to this point. This offseason, we grinded. We grinded throughout the entire season. And to finally get here and do it, it just feels good. It feels good. Wow. Uh, you came in not knowing how you would do physically. You got it done. Had some big moments. Again, how did you get to this point? The last couple of days, I know, were very emotional for you. How's the knee doing? How'd you get through today, my man? Uh, for me, fine. When I fell against North Florida, uh, to not knowing if I would even play in this game. Uh, just thankful for God. He allowed me to make it here, get to this point. Uh, I thought our team, we fought hard throughout the entire game. Uh, Lipscomb did a good job throughout the entire game. It was a really good game, and I thought we executed down the stretch and we were able to come away with it. All right, buddy. Go cut that net down that net, okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank That's you. Lavelle Cabell. Uh, wow. Liberty, 74-68 win over Lipscomb. And the Flames are going to be cutting down the nets here. Wow. <sighs> Coach McKay still on the radio with Westwood One. And we're going to get Scotty James now on the headset. Scotty today, 17 points. Scotty James, 2019 A-Sun champ. How's it feel? Oh, man, it's, it's great. Just all this work that we put in over the offseason and during the season. Oh, man, like I'm so proud of our guys. Like We, we deserve this. This game had all the trappings of a March Madness game. Yep. Emotionally, how was it for you going back and forth here today? Uh, it was fun. It was fun. So much fun in those games. I mean, you know, it, any any moment can make the game. And we made uh, we made some plays down the stretch. And we guarded. Yeah. We, locked, we, we were playing great defense. And, and uh, credit them for they're a great team. Like, like it, it should have been it should have been us two in this game. And, man, I'm just uh, I'm so I'm so happy I get to play with my team. Go cut down those nets, all right? All right, for sure. Appreciate it. Congrats. Scotty James. Coach McKay now getting the headset with us as they get the ladder ready. Richie, so proud of this team, this program for Liberty University. I know tears are in your eyes. It's in ours as well. Your thoughts on this championship? Uh, it's a uh, it's a great day for Liberty University. And uh, so thankful that uh, Jerry Jr. and uh, Jeff Barber at the time and Ian McCall now have supported us in such a way. Uh, that, that it's enabled us to have a little quicker climb. And uh, first, let me get this out of the way. Lipscomb is a class act. They, they have a tremendous program. They're incredibly well coached. And we earned victory tonight because we beat a team that, in my opinion, is an NCAA tournament team. I, I think they're that good. So I was so proud of our guys. We were resilient. We, uh, we weathered the storm in the first half. And uh, what it means for Liberty University is we're going to the NCAA tournament. <laughs> Got a thought uh, real quick, Ryan? Where Coach. You know, you talk about, you know, the impact. We feel the impact that you've had on this program. What what can you say that you feel like these guys, what's it like to be coached by you? Uh, I, I mean, that's a question that I ask myself frequently because of uh, Joe Erdman's book, What's It Like to Be Coached by Me? So hopefully I'm transfer, transformational, intentional about that and, uh, and and love our guys unconditionally. So uh, you guys, let's go celebrate. It'll be a fun ride home. Right, Congratulations. Thanks, thanks for coming, guys. Hey, and Flames Nation. I know you were there. Hey, we had a great turnout it was, it was great. for an eight-hour drive. Yeah. And I know everybody's watching and listening on the radio. Let's go Flames. Let's go dancing. Woo. Coach McKay joins us here. And Liberty going to be cutting down the nets here. We're going to take a break. And uh, when we do, we'll come back. We'll have more post-game reaction. Liberty wins the A-Sun Championship 74-68. And the Flames are going to go dancing for the – fourth time in school history. Stay tuned. We'll have more post-game show coming up on the Liberty Flames Sports Network. 
The Coca-Cola post-game locker room report continues with a scan of the game statistics presented by Larry's Tire and Auto Repair. Once again, back to the arena. Back here live courtside, Nashville Liberty, the 2019 A-Sun champions, besting Lipscomb 74-68. As we look at the final numbers, the Flames, by the way, right now cutting down the nets to our right. Liberty for the ball game, 48%, 28-58. 7 7-21 from three-point range, including six of those in the second half. Lipscomb, 48% for the game, 27-56. Wow, this game, I mean, just looking at these numbers, Ryan. One field goal separate the two. Yep. Two field goal attempts separate the two. Two, one three, I mean, it's ridiculous. One three separates the two teams. Uh, rebounding dead even. Flames, two turnovers in the second half. Incredible. Yep. Four, well, you know, yeah. and handling that full court pressure like we talked about, you know, going to – Four across and the press break. It was full court man, and it, you know they were up in Liberty's grill the whole time. Georgie Pacheco Ortiz, especially handling that, getting Liberty into their half court sets. Only eight turnovers on the day. Lipscomb only scored eight points off of those turnovers. Liberty, on the other hand, turned the Bisons over ten times and scored fifteen off their turnovers. Four and double figures for Liberty, led by Scotty James at seventeen. Georgie Pacheco Ortiz had sixteen. 14 for Cavill, 11 for Holmesley, 8 for Cuffey, 2 apiece for Baxter Bell and McGee, 4 for Keenan Gums, 3 in double figures for Lipscomb. Garrison Matthews led all scores with 21. And the Flames continuing to cut the nets down here. And here comes Coach McKay at the top of the ladder. Coach McKay. Cutting down the nets for Liberty. And you'll hear a big round of applause once he's done. There it is. Only fitting that the head coach of the Flames cutting down the final piece of the net. And so gratifying. Could not happen to a better staff, a better group of kids, and a better university. Really incredible performance here today for Liberty. Our post-game stats brought to you by Larry's Tire and Auto Repair. We are uh, still here, and I think they're going to cut down the nets to our left as well. They're taking both nets <laughs> down here, Ryan. You can't blame them. Um, we're oh. going to have another player or two on here, and we'll go ahead and take another break. And uh, lots more to come on the post-game show. Zach Farquhar, we'll see if Zach can get over here. And Well, he's running for mayor right now. <laughs> Um, as he's getting some applause and hugs. and Zach Farquhar, senior, will be back next year as a GA. And see if we can't get somebody else on the radio here. As Again, it, it, it started all Lipscomb fans here. Now it's all, hey, Zach, Zach. We're going to put racks on the radio. Yep. Zach Farquhar. Oh, come on now. <laughs> Zach, congratulations on the win. You cut the Nets down a week ago for the regular season title. That cannot compare to the moment and the emotion you have right now. Tell us what's going on. Oh, it's uh, it's crazy surreal. It's been it's been a, quite a journey the last four years, and it's been just amazing to see everything like come to fruition right here. And then um, this wouldn't be possible without the guys that kind of laid the foundation the first couple of years. So they played just as big of a role in it as uh, we did today. So definitely going to shout those guys out for sure. Joined by Zach Farquhar, senior out of Ohio. Liberty wins the A-Sun 74-68. The celebration ended up over where we are. Who did you grab? Who, do you remember that celebration when the clock went to zero? Yeah, I went I went right to Lavelle, man. Like. <laughs> It's just we've been we've been at it together since the beginning, uh, since the since day one when Coach McKay got here. Um, it's just it's just wild to look back on the last four years together and then just finally finally see it come together here. How about a tip of the cap to Coach McKay and the staff? Coach was in mm -hmm. tears talking to us. It's emotional for all of us, and you bleed, you sweat, you cry with this entire program and university to see things like that happen for him and the staff and for you guys put that into words for us yeah coach mckay is he's he's an incredible coach and even even a better man i mean he's 
he's an awesome leader for us, both on and off the court. Like uh, he's helped mold us into better men for sure the past four years. Um, and I'm just I'm just so happy for everybody in the program. I mean, I know how much work uh, we've put into this moment, and um, yeah, it's just it's just crazy. Can't even put it into words, honestly. It's crazy. You know, Zach, when you first start playing basketball, all of us as little kids, you got it's a boy in a dream, and that dream always ends with a, a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. You're living that now. If you don't mm -hmm. mind, let us in a little bit about some of the people or maybe a person that helped you get achieve that goal before you got to Liberty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I would I would definitely say my parents. I mean, my parents have been incredible supporters and encouragers of my biggest and wildest dreams. I mean, even even just me coming here is, is a crazy dream at the time, but they supported me and uh, sacrificed so much for me to get to this point. But, um, but yeah, them for sure. And then my teammates, like – a lot of the guys don't get the credit that they deserve just because it doesn't show up on the stat sheet. But I'm so I'm so proud of every one of these dudes. I mean, they're incredible men, incredible players, and uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else. Zach, A Sun champs, yes, going sir. to the big dance. Yes, Cut sir. the other net down. I know you already got your piece of the net. <laughs> Go enjoy more of the celebration. We'll do. So Appreciate happy it. for you guys. Thanks, Mr. York. Zach Appreciate Marquardt. it. Thank you, on guys. The radio with us here post game <laughs> as we beat we they beat Lipscomb 74-68. <laughs> Take another time out. We'll have more postgame coverage coming up here from Nashville. Liberty's going dancing, punching their ticket to the NCAA tournament for the fourth time in school history. Stay tuned. More Coke postgame show coming up on the Liberty Flames Sports Network from Van Wagner. Yeah. <laughs> How about that little cool in the game? Mm -hmm. Flames cutting down the nets right here as Liberty beats Lipscomb 74 68 alongside Ryan Maddox. I'm Alan York as we wrap up our Cook post game show. Ryan, again, we are a very small part of this venture today and this whole entire season, but man, it feels good to see this team celebrating. And we're not done yet. We're going to get Elijah Cuffey on the 30 seconds. We got Elijah Cuff for 30 seconds. Cuff, we got 30 <laughs> seconds. Asa and Champ going to the dance. What's it feel like? Man, this is crazy. It's unbelievable. I was not. I don't even know, man. I don't even know what to say. I was not prepared to celebrate. <laughs> I don't know. Wow, was you just... got your net. What's it like cutting down the, the nets down? It was crazy, man. It's crazy. It... Right, wow. You, you got to go. Go Flames. Yes, sir. All right, that's Elijah <laughs> Cuffey. That was 30 seconds, Elijah Cuffey. Speed dating with the junior or the uh, sophomore from Polka, West Virginia. Uh, he turned back and laughed at me on that. Um, so the net is still up. They're still cutting both nets down. Um, so, anyway. So, yeah, final few seconds here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off, and we got to get back home. And, man, what a celebration that's going to be when we get back to campus. Oh, can you imagine? I cannot imagine what that is going to be like. Uh, but I'm going to be there with this team. And, um, wow, unbelievable. 74-68, um, Flames continue to celebrate on the Lipscomb floor here as Liberty will find out its destination with the NCAA tournament. Uh, coming up next Sunday at 6 o'clock on CBS. or It used to be on CBS. I think it's now on True. It's on a few. Yeah, yeah. True, uh, yeah. TBS. Uh, ESPN. It'll be, all, the, it'll be on all that. And at 28-6, and six, I mean, Liberty has a chance to <laughs> What do you think at 14? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, mean, maybe better than that. I mean, you know, the, you look at when they played quality opponents outside of the conference, Liberty, this team never lost by double digits. Is that right? I mean, it was within 10 or 9. Yeah. Uh, they played a, a quality Vanderbilt team on the road with Darius Garland. You know, the Alabama games, going to, out to UCLA, knocking off the Bruins in Westwood. You know, this is before the collapse of UCLA. This team has, has proven it from – the very beginning, and I think they've earned the right to play for a 13 or 14 seed. Either way, the thing I'm most excited about this week is that Coach McKay is not going to accept in victory something that he would not in defeat. Yep. So they're going to go into the NCAA yep. tournament looking to win, not just show up. Omar Mance, he deserves a piece of this as well. Built the foundation with Coach McKay. Appreciate you, Omar. All right, good luck to you. All right. Omar, part of the staff, couple over at uh, – Trevecca Nazarene. Yep. Uh, but anyway, we're going to sign off, Ryan. Appreciate your time. Uh, wow. Uh, fans tuning in. Liberty will fly back tonight. Uh, right now, we will put on social media where the team will uh, get back onto campus around 9 30, 10 o'clock, pending traffic and weather and all that. But uh, stay logged on to our uh, social media channels. Our uh, player of the game here today. The entire Liberty University. I mean, it's, <laughs> from support staff, Jerry Jr., Ian McCall, the entire staff is our 
Thompson Brooks Insurance players of the game and uh, Church Mutual Insurance defensive plays of the game. There were a bunch of them. Uh, but a shout out to our sponsors and, and making all this possible and our Van Wagner uh, team on campus, uh, Tim East, Kevin Keyes, everybody involved in our radio broadcast uh, and the video team as well with Naz and Matt and everybody and yourself, Ryan, Steve Stillwell back in the studio. Um, incredible venture here. Not done yet. Not done yet. And I want to I want to personally thank you for allowing me to come on the, the broadcast with you this year. This was to have a little taste. You know, I can tell you from someone who coached college basketball for a few years at around the same level and never even sniffed the NCAA tournament to be with a team, even on the periphery, that have had, that has had this kind of success and does it the right way, and to do it with a consummate professional like yourself, I really appreciate the opportunity. Appreciate that, Ryan. Likewise, and uh, again, not done yet, folks. NCAA tournament bound for Liberty for the fourth time, first time since 2013, 2019 A Sun champs, the Liberty Flames, 74-68 over Lipscomb. That'll do it for our broadcast here in Nashville for Ryan and our producer Steve Stillwell. My name is Alan York. Again, follow our social media channels, our website, and meet us back at the airport. Meet us back on campus. It will be a big celebration as Liberty comes home with the tournament crown here in 2019. For our entire crew, my name is Alan York. Final score from Nashville, Liberty 74, Lipscomb 68. The Flames are going dancing in the NCAA tournament. Good evening from Nashville.